Hey, what's up? I'm Nizio Cole, and it's been about three weeks since the third main installment in the Life is Strange series, Life is Strange True Colors, was released, and this is my honest review. I've had time to play it twice already. I've had time to think and reflect. Before I get started though, this will be absolutely no spoilers, so no story spoilers at all. I will be making a video later, maybe next week, talking about spoiler stuff, but this video is strictly non-spoilers. I will be talking about stuff that's publicly available, like stuff that they referenced in the trailer. So if you wanna do a completely blind playthrough of the game, then you can click off this video. But if you at least have some idea of what the game is about, then that's what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. So as far as gameplay goes, True Colors has the same classic look and comment system that we've grown used to in the past few years, but it felt a lot more refined and really the best version of the system that it could possibly be. I wanna talk about Alex's power of empathy and feeling people's emotions. Without revealing too much, everything about it from the idea to the execution was amazing. This is one of those things that I talked about in my top five things I wanna see in Life is Strange 3 that I released, uh, I think it was like late 2020. But having a superpower that the player actually controls is much better than it being a side character which you have no control over. In True Colors, we get to actually connect with Alex and see things from her perspective and how she deals with this power and actually influence the world around her. I love the time travel mechanic in the first game, but this is just on a whole new level. I love the fact that she's able to tell and understand people's feelings, but if they're too strong, she can be overtaken by them, and that's something that you actually have to worry about. This game leans a lot more heavily into the your actions have consequences but it's in a, I would say a better way than was done in previous games. I feel like there was a lot more nuance in the choices. Some of the choices were more realistic and I think they did a really good job with the dialogue, but we'll talk about that in a later section. So overall, the gameplay was solid. There was nothing that distracted me. The controls were great. All of the menus were fine and it was just great to be playing as Alex. I seriously cannot say enough good things about the music and sound design in this game. There's an artist named MXM Tune, and anytime Alex sings in the game, that's her voice. And she actually released a whole album with all the songs that she wrote in the game, which honestly has been on repeat for the past few weeks. That's one of the things that I was actually unsure about when I started the game because Alex's singing voice and regular voice are two different people. But honestly, I didn't notice it at all. Besides that, the menu music and all the other music in the game is really good, and it really fits the town of Haven Springs, or just the game's atmosphere in general. Also, the game has a heavy reliance on music as a theme in many parts of the story. There are many places in the game where you have the option to play a song and sit down and just take everything in, and those are the moments that I love in Life is Strange. I loved when you were able to do that in previous games, and I love it in this game. I would say it's about equal, if not slightly better than the soundtrack of the original game, which will always have a special place in my heart. It just fits so well. I can't say enough good things about it. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the sound design and the voice acting because that was one of the first things that I noticed when I started playing the game. I noticed how high quality all the sound effects were and the voice acting. It sounded less like someone was recording in a studio and more as if they were actual people talking in the environment that they're in, which only adds to the believability of the game and really just sucked me in. For graphics, where do I even start? Everything from the textures to the motion capture to the lighting and the lighting, the lighting was absolutely fantastic. Haven Springs was absolutely the best setting for this game and the storyline and the characters. I thought Arcadia Bay was beautiful, but just looking at the scenery and the lighting of Haven Springs, it was just like seriously one of the best game environments that I've ever seen in any game before. I remember when they first announced the game they were talking about the motion capture and how important it was that they got it right. And at first I thought it was some like Phil Spencer at E3 talking about 4K Xbox developer talk, but they were not kidding. The characters were so much more expressive than in the previous games and you could actually see and feel their emotions, which was obviously such a big part of this game. But the lighting was insane. I found myself wanting to take screenshots every five seconds. And there were so many small details, like look at the view being accurately represented through this bottle. Like that's insane. Like how do you how do you even think of that? I Like so many, so many things that I really did not expect. And I can confidently say that this is the best looking Life is Strange game to come out so far. Now, as far as the atmosphere of the game goes, it was amazing. Whenever I'm playing a game, 
one of the big metrics for me is to be able to lose myself in the game, to be able to forget about everything that's going on in the world and just focus on the game and pretend I'm the protagonist of whatever game that I'm playing. This is something that was extremely big for me in the previous Life is Strange games, and I've always been able to relate to the protagonist and really put myself in their shoes, but this was just on a whole new level. Like everything from the characters, the characters were so genuine. You could actually feel them. You could like, in my mind, they were real people. It's to the point where I've started to like have memories where I'm like, did that happen in real life? No, that happened in Life is Strange True Colors because it was so real. My brain treated it as if this was a real situation actually happening. And I was just so engulfed in the game and the story and the environment and the music. And it was just, it was amazing. I loved all the characters. I loved all the writing. They did an absolutely amazing job with the dialogue. That was one of the things for Life is Strange because I actually played it quite a few years after it released. You know, when the game was set and when the game was developed was 2013 and people talked differently in 2013, which was something that I kind of had to adjust to. But Life is Strange True Colors being set in 2019 makes it a lot easier to relate to. People just felt a little bit more natural. There's absolutely nothing against the first game. I absolutely love it and it'll always have a special place in my heart. But there was no, there's nothing I really had to adjust for when I started playing this game. And everything just came together from the music to the lighting, to the, the textures, to the characters, the voice acting, everything came together to make an absolutely amazing experience, an amazing world that you know, I wouldn't mind living in. I wouldn't mind living in Haven Springs. And now for the conclusion. Life is Strange True Colors is proof that you don't need photorealism to have a realistic experience. I feel more connected to this game than I did to the, you know, the best looking Call of Duty campaign, like uh, Modern Warfare or Black Ops Cold War. And the graphics are stylized. They're, it's, it's one of those things where, where people think that graphics are correlated to a realistic experience, which isn't necessarily true. Because if you have really good graphics, but terrible voice acting, then it'll throw you out of the experience. But Life is Strange True Colors had amazing voice acting, amazing graphics, and, and absolutely just wonderful story. It is, I, okay, I will say this. I will always love Life is Strange 1 forever. But Life is Strange True Colors is my favorite story game in the past decade, or of all time. I will say of all time. This game is a 10 out of 10 for me. For me, this is what a 10 out of 10 game looks like. I just want to say thank you to all the texture artists, the modelers, the programmers, the script writers, and everyone else who worked on the game. You all really put your heart and soul into this game, and it shows. A special shout out to Erica Mori, Katie Benz, and all the other voice actors because their performances were absolutely incredible. They did such a good job that, in my mind, Alex and Steph and all the other characters were just regular people having conversations, dealing with life's problems. This game is a 10 out of 10. Thank you, Deck9. I wasn't sure how I would, you know, feel after playing the game, but I just, I, it was a roller coaster of emotions. Literally, I felt so, I still feel so connected to these characters. I can't even explain it. There's an emotion that I can't even put into words that this game made me feel, and I think that's incredible. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know what you all think about Life is Strange True Colors. Please try and refrain from spoilers in the comments, but I will be making, like I said, I will be making a spoiler video later next week. So let me know if you bought it. Are you going to buy it? What do you think? And uh, that's all for me today. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.